This week was absolutely insane. So many incredible things happened in the world of AI and technology. Apple launched a bunch of AI features without saying the word AI once. Coke introduced a new flavor created by AI. Mexico might have evidence of aliens. Prisoners in Finland are training AI models. Meta is already developing their next AI model with the target of being better than GPT-4. Tesla is absolutely dominating the self-driving race and so much more. Sit back, relax, don't forget to subscribe and let's go. Our first story is about Coca-Cola. With the help of artificial intelligence, the beverage giant has created a new flavor of Coke. This new flavor, which mostly tastes like Coke with a little extra something, is supposed to taste like the future. Coke is an old product and they must keep inventing new ways to appeal to the younger generations, many of whom view sugary soda beverages as a detriment to their health. So tapping AI to help create a new flavor is their attempt to stay relevant. According to a CNN article, the company relied on regular old human insights by finding out what flavors people associate with the future. Then it used AI to help figure out flavor pairings and profiles. Coca-Cola used AI-generated images to create a mood board for inspiration. It really does seem like AI is invading every aspect of our lives at this point. And you'll see more of that in upcoming stories. Next, let's talk about Apple's big launches this week at their event called Wanderlust. Apple is in an interesting position, having hardware in millions of people's pockets that can potentially power AI models. They push every chip upgrade to include more power for AI, even in the Apple Watches. Yet, they never once mentioned artificial intelligence. And this strategy is opposite of their competitors like Microsoft and Google. I've already reported that they're working on their own LLM called Ajax. And AI-powered features are everywhere, including noise cancellation, blurring portraits, and predictive text. They even included a new action button on their phone, the first real button change on the phone in years, which will be perfect for quick access to an AI assistant and can already trigger Siri actions. I I predict they'll launch an incredibly capable version of Siri powered by Ajax that runs almost entirely on device. Apple Silicon is secretly already great at running AI models. And as more support for Apple Silicon for AI models is released, it will only get better. But they probably will call it Siri and won't mention AI. Imagine a version of Siri that runs locally on device, no need for the internet, and has open interpreter-like capabilities that can execute multi-step commands. This is what Siri should be instead of just a way to set timers and remind me of things. Imagine being able to say, hey Siri, let my family know I'll be home in 10 minutes and also order DoorDash for when I get home. And it automatically gets done. Apple also is going all in on spatial video. In preparation for the Apple Vision launch, the new iPhone 15 Pro will include cameras that can capture spatial photos and video. This means you're able to take a 3D video that Apple's upcoming VR device can view. Apple also launched an insane feature called called Object Capture that allows a camera to render 3D objects just by taking a photo of it. This again is in preparation for putting things in the 3D world within the Apple Vision headset. Check out this example. Pretty incredible. I know the price point for Apple Vision is ridiculous, but I'm still really excited about it. Next, prisoners in Finland are working to train AI models. An article by Wired.com describes a woman sitting in front of a computer, an HP laptop, helping to train a model by reading a paragraph of text and answering questions like, is the previous paragraph referring to a real estate decision rather than an application? According to the article, during three hour shifts for which she's paid $1.67 per hour, the laptop is programmed to show the prisoner short chunks of text about real estate and then ask her yes or no questions about what she just read. The woman in the article says she isn't completely aware of why she's doing this work, but it turns out she's helping train a large language model by a Finnish startup called Mitra, which is creating a search engine to help construction companies find newly approved building projects. But why did this startup turn to prison workers? By hiring prisoners, they could get cheap Finnish speaking labor while offering the benefit of preparing prisoners for a post-release life in the digital world. The work is optional and the alternatives are physical labor jobs. So in my mind, why not offer this? But something does feel a little strange about it. What do you think? Next, let's talk about aliens. Yeah, aliens. 
In news that went completely viral this week, the Mexican Congress had a publicly held meeting where they displayed two potential alien corpses that were found in Cusco, Mexico. According to the Independence article, the event was spearheaded by journalist Jamie Mousen, who claimed under oath that the mummified specimens are not part of our terrestrial evolution, with almost a third of their DNA remaining unknown. Additionally, the claims by the self-claimed UFOlogist have not been proven, and Mr. Mousen has previously been associated with claims of discoveries that have later been debunked. Although this is likely fake, the fact that the Mexican government platformed it is pretty exciting. We get to bear witness to the greatest race of all, Who's going to enslave humans first, aliens or AI? There were a bunch of new AI launches this week, so I'll go through them quickly. First, Stability AI continues to contribute to the open source community with the launch of Stable Audio, their version of text-to-audio. With Stable Audio, you can generate music, solo instruments, sound effects, and more. Everything is open source and freely available to use, including the demo, which is available on the website, and I'll link to it in the description below. Do you want me to make a tutorial video on installing this locally? Let let me know in the comments. Next, Slack is releasing AI functionality. As a Slack user for over a decade, this might be one of the most valuable AI launches I've seen. With Slack's AI, you can summarize threads, recap channel highlights, and search for answers within all of your messages. Slack is an incredible tool, but suffers from severe signal to noise issues. A vast amount of business critical information is lost in Slack, so getting answers from the entire history of your conversations will be incredibly valuable. I can't wait to try this out. Next, in direct competition with ChatGPT+, Anthropic has launched a paid version of its Claude AI service. Claude was founded by ex-OpenAI employees, and its performance has been comparable to Chat GPTs. Now, for $20 a month, customers will get five times more usage, the ability to send many more messages, priority access during high traffic times, and early access to new features. The main difference between Claude Pro and ChatGPT Plus is Claude doesn't have different tiers of GPT, such as GPT 3.5 versus GPT 4. To be honest, I haven't tested Claude much. Should I? Let me know in the comments. Next. Character AI is making massive gains on ChatGPT and mobile app usage in the US, according to an article by Robots.net. I haven't had much need for creating characters or doing role play with AI, so I haven't used this product much. What are some of the use cases you're using role playing AI for? But apparently, many other people in the US are using it, with the app generating 4.2 million monthly active users. Character.ai's demographic also tends to skew younger, with 60% of its audience between the ages of 18 to 24. And Character.ai only launched in May of this year, so their growth is impressive. I'm still trying to figure out how to integrate it into my life though. Next, let's talk about Tesla AI. Many people have said other car makers are not far behind Tesla regarding autonomous driving capabilities. However, new excerpts from Walter Isaacson's new book profiling Elon Musk spell a different story. Historically, self-driving cars, including Teslas, have been built using a mixture of neural networks and hundreds of thousands of lines of code. But not long ago, Musk and team decided to go full AI, which significantly reduces complexity and can likely handle edge cases much more effectively. Their AI is based solely on AI learning from the video being recorded from every Tesla on the road. And that's where Tesla has the significant advantage. Musk decided many years ago to put cameras in every Tesla automobile to record all of that video. They currently have millions of miles worth of driving data and are using that to train their pure neural network models. And because of this, they are likely way ahead of their competitors, most of which still don't install cameras on every car. All all of Tesla's newest versions of full self-driving are based on pure AI. I tested it myself a few months ago and it was extremely impressive, but still failed at times. And if I'm being honest, it took way more mental effort to watch the car in full self-driving mode than to just do the driving myself. But with more training and more exposure to it, I think that's going to change. Next. Not to rest on its laurels, Meta is already gearing up for their next version of Llama, with a specific target of equal or better quality to GPT-4. According to an article in The Verge, Meta has been snapping up AI training chips and building out data centers in order to create a more powerful chatbot that it hopes will be as sophisticated as OpenAI's GPT-4. And the company reportedly plans to begin training the new large language model early in 2024, with CEO Mark Zuckerberg evidently pushing for it to once again be free 
for companies to create AI tools with. Also, the journal writes that Meta has been buying more NVIDIA H100 AI chips and is beefing up infrastructure so that this time around, it won't need to rely on Microsoft's Azure Cloud Platform to train the new chatbot. You already know I'm gonna create test and tutorial videos as soon as this new model is released. Once again, I'm extremely impressed by Meta's contributions to the open source community. For our next story, AI is now entering our financial markets. This week, the NASDAQ received SEC approval for AI-based trade orders. According to an article from Cointelegraph, Called the Dynamic Midpoint Extended Life Order, MELO, the new system expands on the MELO automated order type by making it dynamic, meaning it will use artificial intelligence to update and essentially recalibrate itself in real time. In basic terms, order types are software instructions that execute trades according to market prices. Now, these orders will be recalibrated in real time using reinforcement learning. According to a post by NASDAQ, calculated on a symbol by symbol basis, this new functionality analyzes 140 plus data points every 30 seconds to detect market conditions and optimize the holding period prior to which a trade is eligible to execute. What all of this technical talk really means is that more trades will occur without a significant price increase. This week, there was a lot of movement in the safety, security, and legal space related to AI. First, Microsoft committed to assuming legal responsibility for code generated from their GitHub Copilot product. GitHub Copilot allows developers to build code much more quickly because it uses AI to generate portions of code rather than handwriting it all, or more realistically, copying it from Stack Overflow. But Many organizations were concerned that they would accidentally use copyrighted code that was output from Copilot. Now, Microsoft is basically saying, don't worry, we got it. And any legal responsibility will now fall on them. This is a smart move by the software giant, especially as they continue to be the leader in AI amongst the big tech companies. But of course, AI is also being used for nefarious purposes. This is the first full academic year that students have access to ChatGPT, and boy, are things already different. Now, companies that use AI to help students cheat, such as writing essays for them, are advertising all over Meta and TikTok. According to a Fast Company article, SA Mills, companies that pump out school essays for a fee, are soliciting clients on TikTok and Meta platforms, despite the fact that the practice is illegal in a number of countries, including England, Wales, Australia, and New Zealand. Since hallucinations are still a big issue for LLMs, SA Mills claim to combine the power of AI plus human intervention to reduce or eliminate hallucinations from their essays. This seems analogous to the introduction of the calculator. When I was in school, we learned the basics of math and were soon allowed to use a calculator as we ventured into more complex mathematical topics. Maybe essay writing is not going to be that valuable of a skill in the future, so why put that much emphasis on it in school? Learn the basics, and then learn how to use AI to help write. Now let's talk about AI safety. This week, we have multiple stories from the biggest tech companies, starting with Adobe, IBM, and Nvidia, promising the White House that they would develop safe and trustworthy AI. According to an article in The Verge, other companies that committed to the White House include Cohere, Palantir, Software, Scale AI, and Stability AI. These agreements are voluntary, so there's no recourse if companies fail their commitments. Next, Google has committed $20 million for their Responsible AI Fund. According to an Axios article, Google says the project will support researchers, organize convenings, and foster debate on public policy solutions to encourage the responsible development of AI. $20 million is a lot of money, but not really to a company of Google's size. I appreciate what they're doing, but it's gonna take a lot more to ensure safety from AI. Google also took the step of requiring disclosure when political ads contain AI-generated content. With the upcoming elections, AI-generated content and especially deepfakes are gonna be an enormous problem for content platforms like Google and Meta. Both companies are significantly ramping up efforts to identify and prevent AI from being used for harm, fraud, and other nefarious purposes. Continuing the theme of AI disclosure, Amazon enacted a new rule requiring authors to disclose the use of AI when books are published to Kindle. One of the earliest examples of commercialization of AI content was a children's book written entirely by AI. Many authors were up in arms about this revelation, and it was eventually ruled that AI-generated work cannot be copyrighted. Now, AI-generated work will need to be disclosed. 
I'm a big fan of requiring disclosure whenever AI is being used, including writing, TV, movies, and even when I'm talking with a chatbot. So I'm happy to see this. Next, when most people think about the resources required to train AI systems, they think about GPUs and electricity, but almost no one thinks about water. According to an article from AP News, water is an important ingredient in the creation of AI, which is often overlooked. Microsoft-backed OpenAI needed for its technology plenty of water, pulled from the Raccoon and Des Moines rivers in central Iowa to cool a powerful supercomputer as it helped teach its AI systems how to mimic human writing. Water is used to help cool enormous server farms. In a paper due to be published later this year, it's estimated that ChatGPT gulps up 500 milliliters of water, basically a 16 ounce water bottle. Every time you ask it a series of between five to 50 prompts or questions, Microsoft, Google, and other tech giants are reporting large increases in their water usage. This is another fascinating side effect of the AI race. More efficient and sustainable technology will be needed as the desire for more performant AI models continues. Okay, enough with the doom and gloom. We have two stories this week that'll make you smile. First, a student from MIT used AI to help design a building with less concrete usage. Concrete is one of the most widely used construction materials and produces a significant amount of greenhouse gas, responsible for 8% of the world's emissions. Jackson Jewett, a third year PhD student, is writing his dissertation on developing algorithms to design concrete structures that use less material but maintain the same strength. This is an incredible application of AI. And next, on the health side, AI continues to help doctors identify the world's deadliest cancers at a better rate than just human doctors. The Optelum Virtual Nodule Clinic software is trained to identify cancer at a promising rate using huge data sets of CT scans as training data. With the help from the software, we'll be able to detect cancer earlier and require fewer follow-up CT scans, which are costly and time intensive. I'll link to the article below in the description so you can see the details. Now it's time for the AI AI video of the week. X user Jeff Synthesize has created another compelling video. This week, remaking a scene from Pulp Fiction using AI. Here's a short clip from it. But you know what funny thing about Europe is? What? It's a little different. I mean, they got the same shit that they got here, but it's just, it's just there, it's a little different. Example. All right, well, you can walk into a movie theater in Amsterdam and buy a beer. And I don't mean just like a little paper cup, I'm talking about a glass of beer. And in Paris, you can buy a beer at McDonald's. Pulp Fiction is one of my favorite movies of all time, so this video made me happy. Congrats to Jeff for once again being this week's AI Video of the Week. And for our last story, a new large language model out of Russia has reportedly displayed higher potential than GPT-4. This comes from IT giant Yandex, a Russian company. It's difficult to know whether this is true or not since we have no way to test it and I haven't seen a way to play with the model. It doesn't seem as though this model will be open source either. According to MinaFM.com, dubbed Yandex GPT, the Russian bot's basic model still is the US ChatGPT 3.5 version in relation to creating answers in Russian. We know the AI race is not going to be based on tech giants in the US alone. AI supremacy is a global race with China and the US leading. And now apparently Russia has come with a strong showing. That's it for this week's AI news. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.